Hi, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and SoapQueen.com. Today, I'm going to show you how to make this amazing soap. This is a cold process soap that is naturally colored and uses, like cold process, melt and pour embeds. This also has some really awesome charcoal lines and, of course, poppy seeds on top for some interest. So let's just go ahead and get started. The first step is to make our melt and pour embeds. And this is the light cold process melt and pour from brambleberry.com. The reason it's called light cold process is because it has a decreased amount of liquid glycerin in it. Glycerin is a humectant that draws moisture to the skin, or in this case, to the soap. And so extra glycerin also makes the soap a little bit softer and more prone to sweating when it's embedded in the cold process soap. So that's why it's really important that when you are doing melt and pour embeds that you use a like cold process melt and pour soap to ensure that the soap doesn't melt unevenly as your user is using it in the shower or get sweat on it. I'm chopping these up into small bits because that'll help them melt down more easily in the microwave. Once this is all chopped up, we're just gonna put this in the microwave on 30 second bursts until it's fully melted. It's tempting to do longer than 30 second bursts, but don't because if you accidentally boil the soap, it smells terrible and then the soap consistency changes. We're using just about eight ounces of this light cold process white melt and pour from brambleberry.com. Now that the soap is fully melted, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of the Brambleberry silicone square molds here, and you notice they fit together really well. Just make sure that the channels on both sides are fully interlocking. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with leaking soap. I like to prop this up in something tall. So in this case, I'm just gonna use a water container here. So now I have made sure this is all the way fully done there. Pouring gently and slowly, just fill up that silicone mold. And this is melt and pour soap, so it'll be ready in just a couple hours. So you're gonna wanna do this though a couple hours before you make your cold process soap. So this does require just a teensy little bit of prep. Once it's filled to the top, gently prop it. And now it's time to make our green embeds. And so in this case, I'm using the non-bleeding chrome green from Brambleberry. This is a pre-mixed oxide in some melt and pour soap to help you get a nice even color without having to worry about mixing the colorant yourself. When I use these, I just do small amounts because we're gonna let the heat of this hot melt and pour soap melt this green. So add that. I used about a quarter of, quarter of this block and stir until you get a really nice green. Now that my green is the color I want it to be with the hue and the shade, go ahead and take your second square silicone column mold, prop it up, and then just pour gently down into the inside of the mold. And again, this is gonna take a couple hours to harden up and kind of be watching because these things can fill up pretty fast because they're small. Ah, there we go. So set this aside and just wait for a couple hours for it to harden. Of course, I've made some ahead of time so we could get this process started. I love the Brambleberry silicone molds because they're so easy to release. So just pull gently away from the sides and it's done. It's like it's all out. It's just so easy. You can trim up if you get a little bit of like leakage, you can always trim it up with a knife. It's really easy to do because these lock pretty solidly. And then once that's done, in order to make our embeds, we're just gonna cut this in half. So lay it like this and I'm just gonna clean up that, there we go. Using a non-serrated knife, cut it in half. And then you're gonna take this guy and you're gonna cut it lengthwise. So cut this in half again. And then take this and cut it in half again. And so what you'll end up with when you're all done is each one of these is going to make eight total embeds for you that we'll use in our cold process soap. 
You'll notice I did not fragrance these little embeds. And you might be thinking, well, why didn't I fragrance them? You could fragrance them, but honestly, it's a pretty unnecessary step. This is such a small amount of soap that fragrancing this or not fragrancing it isn't gonna have any sort of effect on the final bar of soap. For this project, I am using one of Brambleberry's brand new fragrances, Cucumber Garden, which I love. It smells, well, like a cucumber, but it smells like a cucumber that is fresh from the garden. So it almost has like a dirty herbaceous scent to it. It's very realistic. It's very refreshing. And I think it's a great unisex scent as well. Now that this is all done, it's time to put these to the side and start working on our cold process soap. And the first step to doing our cold process soap is to make sure that these embeds fit butt to butt in here. And you'll notice they're a little bit big. So what I'm gonna do is just cut these down a little bit to size to make sure that when I put them in that they are going to fit without too much, too much trouble. So on this, it looks like there's just about an extra kind of inch on the white. So I'm just gonna cut all the white ones down about an extra inch so that way I don't have to do that after I've poured my soap and I don't have to really worry about hurrying or rushing. Let's see. And if they're not quite perfect, that's fine. Then these little guys are just extra. You can save them to toss in another recipe or you could always remelt them down and turn them into something else as well. So just put these to the side. You are gonna need them in probably 10 or 15 minutes, so make sure that they're kind of close by too. Before we get started soap making, there's just a little bit more prep to do because of course, separation is in the preparation. So first thing I'm gonna do is weigh out my fragrance oil. And again, this is yummy. Cucumber Garden from Brambleberry.com. And I am using a glass, chemical resistant uh, container to do that. You don't ever want to use plastic to measure out your fragrance oil or your essential oil because the plastic could get eaten and kind of soften up and poop all over the place. So that's about 2.2 ounces of the fragrance oil. Next thing I need to do is prep my colorant. This is Brick Red Oxide from Brambleberry.com and with oxides you always want to disperse them in a little bit of fixed oil because they tend to clump and if they clump what ends up happening in your soap is those clumps sit there and then when the user actually gets to a clump they get huge streaks of oxide all over themselves which is really not ideal. So in this case it's half a teaspoon of Brick Red Oxide to half a tablespoon of fixed oil, and any lightweight oil will do. In this case, I'm using avocado oil. This is the mini mixer from Brambleberry. Fully insert it all the way down. You don't wanna have any of that oxide poofing up. And then, it makes very quick work with clumps. Now that's done. So we have our fragrance fully measured out. We have our colorant pre-done. And then it's time to get to the soap making. But before that, I'm gonna suit up for safety. Be right back. I pre-mix my lye water. I am gonna add sodium lactate to it. Sodium lactate helps the soap harden up faster, which is great, because I love to get my soap out faster. It's a naturally occurring salt. And so I add that directly to my lye water. If you use too much, the bars can get really hard and crack. So in this case, I'm just doing two teaspoons into my lye water and just stirring until it's fully incorporated in. And next, I have all my oils for my recipe fully melted in here already. And you might notice that this is a natural orange color and that comes from the red palm oil. Red palm oil is palm oil that hasn't been bleached. It has its, all of its beta carotene still in it, so it makes it naturally kind of this orange color. And interestingly enough, there's only 5% in this total recipe, and we're still getting this really powerful color. Of course, if you don't like using palm oil, you don't need to use the palm oil, and you can just use the Brambleberry light calculator to kind of change this recipe. We also have carrot seed oil in here, olive oil, some skin-loving cocoa butter. This is a really nourishing recipe. I really wanna amp up the farmer's market concept here, so I am gonna do a full tablespoon of this tomato powder, which will into my oils, so the entire thing is done, and th that is going to help keep this, A, a little tiny bit textured, teensy, teensy, teensy bit of scrub that you won't even really notice, but it'll also give the whole thing a really nice orange hue. 
Just stick blend that right in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pour my lye water gently down my stick blender. This is kind of silly, but I think it reduces air bubbles in the soap, and air bubbles are totally fine, but they do kind of look a little bit white when you cut the final bars. So I like to do everything I can to minimize air bubbles. So now I'm gonna turn my stick blender on. Look at that gorgeous orange color. Now this is really lovely as is. I'm gonna pump it up with a little bit of this uh, brick red oxide as soon as I get to a slightly thicker trace. I'm at a pretty good trace right now. This is a really thin trace, but I am gonna be splitting this a few times, so. Now it's time to add the brick iron oxide here, brick red. I'm gonna do about half a teaspoon of this mixture and kind of eyeball your half teaspoon. Then I'm gonna give it a quick stick blend. Mmm, wow, that really pumped up the color, didn't it? I'm gonna add my fragrance oil. This fragrance performs really well, so I don't need to whisk it in. I have plenty of time to work with it. The main thing that I wanna get here is a thick enough trace that it's going to A, hold troughs for my design, but also suspend those embeds. So I'm gonna stick blend this just a little bit longer. It's a really good kind of medium trace, but it's not gonna hold a trough design. That might hold a trough design. We shall see. So now we're just gonna pour just enough to cover the bottom into this Brambleberry 10 inch silicone loaf mold. I love working with this loaf mold. I find it so easy to work with. And it's fully covered. So. Now, it's time to make our troughs. Let's see if these actually hold. That looks like it's holding. That's good, okay. So there's no right way or wrong way to make a trough, but you definitely, if you're going to try and do this as a design element, it does have to be wavy enough that it doesn't look like it was a mistake. So I tend to make pretty deep troughs. So now I'm making sure that my troughs really are actually looking like troughs and not mistakes. Because when you do this kind of technique, you want it to look as though you did troughs on purpose as opposed to just kind of sloppy line making. So that looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna do a charcoal line. Can't leave well enough alone. Just gonna smooth that out a little. There we go. And now I'm gonna do a charcoal line. And charcoal powder is super fine. So I just like to pour a little bit in over this guy and then try and do this evenly. Charcoal also gets everywhere, which is super fun. So work, you don't need to work too quickly. Just kind of work slowly to try and get an even coating of this charcoal line. Now it's time to plop some of this beautiful textured soap on here, and then we're gonna do our embeds. And I'm being really gentle so I don't displace my charcoal line. It's a really nice thick trace, but like I said, this fragrance is so great to work with that it's not gonna really thicken up too much. We're gonna have a lot of time to work with this. If this gets a little thick on you, just go ahead and use a spoon just to smooth it out because we need a surface to put our embeds in. And now, alternating the colors of embeds, Take your embeds and just go all the way down. And you'll notice I have two long green ones and one short green one. So kind of just try and match it up. And you can always put these off to the side or you can just cut it to make it match perfectly. But that looks pretty good to me. And that one's a little long. There we go, perfect. 
And now that we have our embeds in, it's time to plop some more soap on top of these. And we have to leave a little bit of soap for the, the top top because we want two, my, two charcoal lines. So don't do too thick here. We want this to be pretty thin. We just want it to cover our embeds and give us enough space to do a trough. This is gonna make the most gorgeous textured top when it's ready for that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap this down because I want all the soap to go in all the crevices. Now make your, make your troughs. Mmm, so fun to play with wet soap. There we go, troughs. And once that's done and you're happy with your trough design, we're gonna do another layer of charcoal soap. Make sure none of the embeds are showing through though. So another layer of charcoal. And I'm putting it through the putting it through this strainer because I'm trying to make sure there's not like huge amounts of charcoal any place. And I'm also trying to make sure that there's no clumps that end up. So the strainer is really helpful for that. This is the soap is perfect, and I'm just gonna plop it on top. And I'm gonna try really hard not to displace any of my charcoal. And hoping I have enough to get the most perfect design on the top ever. Oh, look at that texture, you guys. It is so good. Okay, getting all the last little bits of soap. And then I'm going to kind of just tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. And taking this and now I can just manipulate this and turn this into whatever kind of top I want. I tend to always go for the rounded kind of like, oh, it goes up in the middle. I'm gonna try and do something a little bit different today. So maybe something more that looks like a little garden patch almost. So a little bit of designs on the top like that. And then the final step is to decide if I wanna gel phase this or not. And gel phase is this kind of really personal preference thing. You can gel phase and then your colors are a little bit brighter so that tomato powder would really brighten up. Uh, and the soap is also a little shinier. And when you gel phase, it's also, uh, it makes the bar hard faster. So I did a couple batches beforehand to decide whether I should gel phase for you or not. So I'm gonna cut those for you next after I do the very final finishing touch here, which is put my poppy seeds on. And the poppy seeds are just a really great final, final little decoration. And again, I think it really helps with that whole farmer's market. This really feels like a garden, looks like a garden concept. So that's done. The last thing we're gonna do is spray with 99% rubbing alcohol to help make sure that there is no soda ash that forms on this. Now, to gel or not to gel? Let's talk about that in a second, but first I'm gonna get this all cleaned up so I can show you gelled versus not gelled. So here is my gelled one and here is my not gelled one. We'll see if I actually manage to fully not gel this by putting it in the freezer. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put gloves back on because there's so much charcoal on here that I'm a little worried about getting my hands all charcoaled up and just I wanna stay a little bit more clean when I'm cutting these. So let's take out our gelled one first. I'm expecting this one to be harder, expecting it to be shinier, expecting the color to be a little bit brighter. So we'll see. Pull gently, there we go. Ooh, yikes. So when I cut these, because the poppy seeds are on top, I like to cut down the side as opposed to cutting from the top, because if you cut from the top, you get drag marks from the poppy seeds. So cut down the sides with a non-serrated knife. And let's see how this one looks. 
So this looks really great. I do notice that some of the charcoal lines are kind of doing a little bleeding. It's really easy just to take a little rubbing alcohol though and clean that up. So don't worry if yours end up doing that. Partially that happens because my charcoal is just a little bit thick. So this is our gelled option and it looks like it gelled all the way through, which is great. Now let's look at our non-gelled soap and see if we can really see any difference at all. First I'm gonna clean this up though because this charcoal line will get all over everything. So this soap, I soaked at slightly lower temperatures and then I put it straight into the freezer to try and make sure it didn't go through gel phase. I'm expecting it to be a little harder to get out, a little softer. And there we go. Now, so now let's see if I was able to stop the gel phase successfully. Going through gel phase is certainly easier than stopping the gel phase. But sometimes that creamier look is kind of what the design calls for. So let's see, how does this look? Oh, there is definitely a real difference. You can definitely see that the gelled soap has a brighter color and the non-gelled soap is a little bit lighter, a little bit creamier, a little less shiny. So these bars will be ready to use or give away within four to six weeks. Just make sure they have a really good drying time. And if you make this or anything else with Brambleberry stuff, I really want to see it. So please hashtag your creations, hashtag BrambleOn on Instagram or Twitter or post them to our Facebook page. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to our channel. Until next time, you guys, I can't wait to see what you create.